What is up y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna do a tutorial video on how I set up a league. I'm gonna take you through all the settings that I choose, as well as my custom views to maybe help you out with when you're setting up your league. So we're gonna start at the very beginning here. I didn't wanna already jump in and assume anybody knows anything, cause I know some of y'all playing for the very first time, some of y'all a bit more advanced, but let's just go from the very beginning, a new standard game. Now, I don't do challenge mode a lot of the times because if I mess something up or if I wanna change something, I wanna be able to hit commissioner mode. You can do that, if you can play challenge mode if you want, by all means, there's no problem with it. I respect the people who do play it. It is more difficult, but I do not. So we go in and we're gonna go ahead and just put in tutorial game. Cool spelling there. And I'm gonna not select any other leagues right now just for the sake of speed. But usually I would select other leagues, whether it's the Redacted League in previous years or the KBO, the Partner Leagues. I imagine this is Independent Leagues, the MLB Partner Leagues. But it usually just said Independent League, so I don't know if something changed there as well. But we'll go ahead and get this loaded up. I'll pick a team, we'll kind of go through things, and we'll see, uh, we'll see what we've got. All right, so this is where we pick our team. I picked the Orioles and I'm gonna just be the general manager right now because I wanna show you guys some things about having a manager. I kinda go both ways with it. Sometimes I'm the GM and the manager. Other times I like to have a manager because it can add a level of difficulty, particularly if they're a more advanced manager, like um, you know somebody who's been around the league for a while and they're gonna wanna have control over different things. That can add some difficulty. Now, as far as the trade difficulty so far this year, I've found that these, this default, which is how it starts right here with the, how many clicks is this? One, two, three, four, four clicks up. And then right in the middle there for trade preference, vet, veterans versus prospects. I found that to be pretty difficult. I do get one over here and there, but I don't find myself able to rip the computer off all the time. And even sometimes like, let's say you get a deal that you think is really good. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're ripping them off. Don't forget that the 30 GMs view players differently. So just because you think it's a good deal doesn't mean that the GM sees those players the same way and doesn't mean that they're gonna play out to the way that your GM sees them. Uh, so, or your scout rather, I should say, you're the GM. So keep that in mind when you're making trades. You know when you're ripping the computer off, right? Like if I'm trading, um, you know, like let's just say I'm trading freaking Taryn Vavra for Wander Franco. I'm hosing the computer and that's stupid to me. I, I don't want to play that way. I want to have challenges and so I'm not into that. So first thing you start on this screen, I go right into the game settings and we go through here and you can kind of pick things that you want customized in terms of like how fast your computer is um, because some of this stuff is going to build up over time and make the, the save run a bit slower if you don't have a fast computer. So you might not want to save some of this stuff if you're doing a 10, 20, maybe even 30 plus year save because then all of a sudden it's going to start lagging a bit if you're on a slower computer. But then first things first that don't matter for your computer, I go down and I get rid of the stars. Look, if you wanna use stars, that's up to you. I respect the people who do. I love watching old school sports here on YouTube. He uses the stars, it's not for me. So I go right to the 2080 with the increments of five and I like to see the high end there. I, I, so I go with the max ratings going beyond 80. So it's a standard 2080 scale, right? 80 is the highest. If you say he's got 80 speed, he's Billy Hamilton. 80 power, Aaron Judge. Well. In the game, uh, sometimes it says, well, you can break that scale a bit. And if if real life used that, if, if we said that guys could break the scale, then like Pete Alonso and Aaron Judge probably have 90 power, to be honest. Like they're they're a level above even the highest. But the, the real world uses 2080. I like to let the game go a bit further. My Edwin Diaz was like a 120 type player. I think I might've mentioned this in another video. I can't remember if I left it in or not. So I might be repeating something that I've said in a previous video, but either way, I like to have it show the max there because sometimes it creates some insane guys. Last year, the guy we called the Sim Demon, Fernando Tatis, was like a 115 overall kind of player. And frankly, he deserved it because he was playing at that level. I do use the complete scouting. I keep it on normal. I keep all the reports. Um, I guess I keep the default here. Re reports of retired players can get deleted. Incorporate stats into reports. I keep that as is. I keep all of this as is. The only thing I change is the overall potential, moving it off of stars and make it show the max ratings. Everything else here I keep 
just the way it is. All ratings displayed to the major leagues, yes. Overall ratings based on all players as opposed to just their position. I keep that. I use the coaching system. Now, if you're a beginner, you might not want to use this, right? And one of the things I talk about whenever I have people come in my stream and say, hey, I just got the game. You know, it's a bit overwhelming. What do I do? Well, I don't have a one size fits all answer, but what I like to say is that you can go as deep or as shallow as you want with the game. And one of the things that you might not be interested in is the coaching system. If you're just learning the game and you wanna focus on building a team and you don't wanna have extra things to kind of worry about and manage, maybe you don't want the coaching system on. I do like to have the coaching system. It adds another wrinkle where you're trying to get guys whose personalities mesh and make sure that everything's pulling in the same direction. You can have a situation where you have coaches who are good at their specific things, but their personalities are a mess, so they don't have cohesion, and that can really impact your team. You're looking at your talent, you're like, man, how the heck are we 10 games under 500 you know, in August when this team is very good? Well, the team might hate each other if you're using chemistry uh, for the player personalities and the coaches might hate each other if you're using the coaching system. So there are definitely reasons to not want to do this right away if you're not willing to get that deep with it. I keep it on personally. So that's what we're going to go with here. And I'll show you how it all works because you got coaching cohesion impact and I just keep it at normal. I don't want it to be totally crazy. I think it's perfectly fine at normal and then coaching contract extensions. I keep that allowed and then owner goals. This is another thing where as deep or as shallow as you want, if you don't want to deal with the owner goals, then click them off. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think that your gameplay is going to be massively impacted to the negative if you don't use them or that I don't think it's like so great that you have to use them. I think they can be pretty cool, uh, something that you have to kind of try to achieve while you're also achieving your main goal. And a lot of times the goals go in concert, right? Like if you're building a good team, then the owner's gonna want you to be a winning team. So that's working toward the same thing. But sometimes you're building a, like a power team with great pitching and he's like, I need you to increase your steals. And you're like, geez, I really don't wanna do that. Now, if you miss an owner goal, you're not like gonna get insta fired either if you're getting five goals done out of or four goals done out of five then you're going to be fine but let's just say that three of your goals go against what you're trying to do and you don't do them well you might face some heat so you might not want to use them i'm going to leave them on to show you how they work um, and then there is a new feature this year where you can kind of negotiate some of them, right? So let's say you got that stolen base goal and you're like, man, we do not have a speed team. What are you talking about? You can maybe try to discuss that with the owner and work on a different goal. And hopefully we have some that we can discuss here so I can show you how that mechanic works. Now on the auto save and log settings, I do it at least once a month, sometimes once a week. I, my sketchier computer, when I played it on that, I would do once a week because I wasn't trying to lose anything. Once a month is pretty much fine for everybody now these auto save settings this is what i was talking about earlier with regards to the strength and quality of your computer will determine how much of this you might want and really if you even care about it will also be a, a determining factor but some people just say i want it to run as fast as i can i don't really care about too much old stuff so click all this off so save box scores definitely doing all major leagues there Sometimes I do all leagues, right? But if you're not really getting into minor league box scores, you don't need to worry about that. Game recaps from your human teams. That one, I can go either way with it. I leave it on the default, but I've just realized that like, I don't necessarily need those beyond, beyond the given year. Uh, same with the win probability graphs, although those can create some pretty fun screenshots. Like when you have a 10 run comeback or something in the ninth inning and you're seeing that that's that like EKG looking thing, the win probability graph. And it's like all the way up here that you were going to lose. And then boom, you came all the way down because you, you scored 10 runs in the ninth. Some of those are cool, but they're not necessary if you don't want them. So I keep the default for the most part here, except on a few things. I like to keep the injury logs pretty detailed and I like to keep the transaction logs pretty detailed. So I keep 10 years on both of those. News logs, I don't usually change. 3D movements, you know, I don't know if I really need that. I've never thought about turning that off. I'm kind of learning something new about myself right now that that default is all leagues. And I don't know if I need that. I never, there was, okay, I shouldn't say never. There was one time that we were going through a game log and we saw some really interesting double play or no, it was a triple play. I think it was a triple play. It was on stream. 
and we were like, how the hell did this work? I can't even remember what it was. So this story kind of sucks because of that. But we had to see, we're like, what is this? I think it was like, again, I can't even, I can't even make up a, a potential of what it could be. But the way it worked, it involved like the pitcher, the, th the first baseman, and I want to say an outfielder, but maybe not. Either way, we had to see how that happened. So having the 3D movements for that was helpful, but is it necessary? No. So we're gonna turn on, we're gonna turn it on none right now, which means you can't have any highlights or replays. Frankly, I'm okay with that, especially for uh, something like this, which is a league I'm not even gonna play out. Prospect rankings, I keep them on annually. You can do dynamic if you want. I just do annual preseason predictions. I do automatic, which gives you two sets. They do one right when spring training starts and then another at the end of spring training. So I kind of like looking at both. The first ones always seems to be a little bit goofier. Um, or maybe, maybe I just like that the second one is a bit better. <laughs> it seems like it is, right? After you go through spring training, the computer maybe has a better understanding of what your team is. And I always feel like those are a bit better. Maybe, I don't know exactly what they're using the first one off of, because sometimes I will have like a 20 win difference. And basically what it is, is it runs a sim of how they think the league will play out. And any one given sim, can go a lot of different ways, but it is weird how it always seems like that first one undersells my teams. And then the second one after spring training is more aligned with how we think the team is supposed to be. But either way, I leave it on automatic. And sometimes I even forget to check the first one, which again, if you don't check it before the end of spring training, it'll be gone. And the only one you can see during the season is the one from the end of spring training. Global financial coefficient, don't even know what that means. I don't mess with it. I could read this right here. Multiply the financial coefficient by 10. I'd have to know what a financial coefficient is to know whether 1.000 is good or multiplying it by 10. You got me. I have no idea. Players and team. Enable injuries. Yes, I leave it on default and that's plenty of injuries. Y'all, if you play this game long enough, you are going to get OOTP'd in at least one season. And what that means is your team will be performing well and it is going to get absolutely ravaged by injuries. It's a guarantee. Sometimes they do it throughout the season and you just start losing big piece after big piece uh, over the course of the year. And other times they wait till the end, late August or all in September, but you will get OOTP'd. And the thing of it is, I you know, I call it getting OOTP'd. I don't mean that to say that like this only happens on OOTP. It does happen in real life. But some of the things that this game gets well, uh, get, gets right as far as like nailing it with the uh, realism can be infuriating. And injuries are one of them because yes, it does happen. But when it's happening to you in game, you get so frustrated. But I do like uh, I do like that the realism is there and we've seen real life teams get absolutely ravaged by injuries. It blows up a season. You know, I know a lot of teams will say we don't want to use injury as an excuse. And I respect that. Right. Like they're saying, hey, next man up, yada, yada, yada. Simple fact is you lose seven of like your top 20 players that you're cooked. You're cooked. Like even the Dodgers, I think, would be cooked on that. Like even even the Yankees, even the Padres. I'm trying to name like the best teams like you can only have so much depth um, and there are times that you can overcome it. But for the most part, you lose that many key players for significant periods of time. You're going to be cooked. So I just leave them on normal, normal and occasionally the delayed injury diagnosis. This one's always kind of fun to build suspense, right? Because you'll get hey, in uh, pending injury. Sometimes it ends up being something that's like, oh, he's hurt for three days. It's fine. It was just a sore ankle. No big deal. Other times it's it's TJ, right? It, it can run the gamut there, but I do kind of like how that adds some suspense. I don't hide the injury rating. That will tell you if they're normal, fatigue, or no, not, not fatigued, fragile, wrecked, Iron Man, or durable. I did not give that in the right order, but those are the ones that they can be. Enable suspensions, definitely. Normal frequencies, fine by me. Personality ratings, I do. I turn them on. I want to see the personality uh, ratings on their page. The player morale system, yes. Team chemistry, I mentioned these two things earlier. This is similar to the coach system, but for players. Now, if you don't want to use this, that's okay. 
especially if you're just beginning and you want to focus on the mechanics of building a team and learning how to do that, you might consider turning these two things off because they do add another wrinkle. And again, if a bunch of your players hate your manager or hate each other and you got some a-holes on the squad, it can t it can sink a team, guaranteed. Like th this is definitely something that plays to real life and can be really challenging. So if you're just getting into the game, feel free to click those off while you kind of figure things out. And then show player nicknames, that's just really up to you if you wanna see their nicknames. Most of the times it's just the ones from uh, baseball reference that the game has pulled in but then as you get further into your sim it starts to make up nicknames for players and it, it has a lot of fun stuff uh, with that so I, I like the player nicknames for sure better aging speed and development speed okay so obviously this is how fast they age uh, or how quickly they develop and so this is a personal preference thing generally I tend to leave the aging as is and then tone up the dev uh, the development a bit I either go 1.05 or 1.1. For now, I'll go 1.05. I'm not gonna get deep enough in here. Uh, you know, it's not like I'm gonna be simming a bunch of seasons here to show you guys. So whatever you want, if you go too high though, you're gonna create a silly league. I would really keep it tempered and go small with it as you kind of figure things out, right? I've seen, I think it was PF Holden, a wonderful channel, go check out his stuff. He's getting back into 24. Said that he used to do aging on 0.8 and that that was way too slow. Like guys are playing into their 40s at their peak level and such. Um, so yeah, you can turn it down a little bit. I might do like a 0.97 if you really want guys to last longer, but I definitely like to turn the development up a little bit because I feel like sometimes it can take a little too long. And speaking of PF Holden, I wanna reference a point that he made, which I think is excellent. Same point I like to make when I talk, talk about turning up the development. The league development has t turned up lately, right? We're seeing guys come up younger and younger. The league is getting better at developing players quicker. The aging curve has moved. And I'm not sure OOTP has moved perfectly with it just yet so i like to turn it up a little bit to make sure that uh, it's closer to it so like i said i usually do one to one 1.1 or 1.05 both i find to be pretty solid development target age um, i leave it at default aging target age i leave it default as well and i guess you could just change those too if you didn't want to mess with the speed you could just say uh, development target move it younger uh, aging target, younger, older, however you want. That's up to you, but I leave those at default. I mess with the speeds. That's what I have experience with. And this is the 1.05 or the 1.1 are what I have um, good results with. Now the TCR, talent change randomness. This is literally the randomness. And the reason I say, say it like that as opposed to like, yeah, no dub, Paul. A lot of times we in the OTP community only talk about it in the positive. When somebody pops off, they were like a 30 potential and they somehow become like a 60 potential. That's TCR, right? They developed something. And then when you're playing the game, you can kind of create your storyline of how that happened. Think of Jose Bautista uh, in recent years. I mean, I guess he's a, he's retired now, so I, I got to update my references. JD Martinez with my Tigers changed his swing, became an absolute stud. Max Muncy with the Dodgers figured out his swing, became an absolute stud. So we think about TCR to the positive, but it can also work to the negative. Guys that, that just kind of fall apart after a few good years, um, that can certainly happen. So don't forget, if you turn this up too much, you're gonna have star level players that are just gonna fall off a cliff. And that can be for any number of reasons. And because it's the talent change randomness, it's not necessarily injury that would do that. Last year I played at 125 and I liked how that felt. That seemed fine. This year I've started at 110 because I kind of want to start slow and go from there. So I'm at 110 right now. I don't want to disable player development. And last year I want to say that this was broken, disable development for draft eligible players. Um, and that's why I used to turn it off. But I think it's fine this year. So I'm leaving it as is. Splits, left, right splits. I like to keep all just to see how they did in the minors with it. Fielding stats, um, I usually do major league only, but maybe all is better. It depends It depends what you want here. These are definitely personal preferences. And then postseason stats, I couldn't give two craps how their minor league postseason work did. And batter versus pitcher, that can be fun. And if you're gonna do a long sim, you might wanna keep it because it could be really cool to look back on and say, oh, Juan Soto against Walker Buehler, you know, had 250 plate appearances because they were on the Dodgers or the Padres and the Dodgers respectively. And this is how it turned out. But 
overall, it, that's more of like a, a, a frivolity as opposed to something that's really meaningful, right? Because here's the thing, the sample sizes are usually too small. And by the time they get big enough, the players have changed far too much for them to still be worthwhile. For example, Miguel Cabrera is starting to develop some samples against pitchers that might actually have some viability in terms of their size, but now he's 100 years old and he's no longer the player that he was, I'm looking it up right now, uh, to where you're not gonna have that much value in them. So let's see who he's developed or had the most plate appearances against, right? Okay, so his number one guy is not even in the league anymore, James Shields, but he cooks him with 79 plate appearances of an 11-21 OPS. So Kluber, 76 plate appearances, which isn't even that big of a sample. Again, you really start to need, you probably need at least triple digits to start doing anything mathematically meaningful out of it. You can get some things out of smaller samples, but you have to parse them so much to figure out the makeup of them that that just looking at it and saying, he hits 400 off of him in 22 at-bats, that, that tells you nothing. That it, Without more context, that alone tells you nothing. But I see here, Chris Sale, Miguel Cabrera, it's 298, 412, 544 against him with four homers. Um, and I'm like, okay, great. And I know Sale hasn't been great so far this year, but Miggy is nowhere near the guy who put up those numbers. So I don't get anything meaningful out of that. Bottom line is I do keep none and I don't expect on ever really changing it, even if I know I'm gonna be doing a very long sim. So, and I, I never mess with any of this. This would be stuff that, uh, you know, if you really want to get into jersey textures and cap logos and all that, cool. I leave this as is. Face gen, I like to have all the players have a face. This is up to you. And again, this is based on, you know, what your computer can handle. I think as they're creating the faces, it can take a bit more the deeper you get into the league. But I've got a pretty decent desktop that I play this on, so I don't really have any problems having everybody have a face. I usually do at least major league only. If the minor leaguers only have the logo, sure, but I like to do all players and it's the default now, so that's cool. Um, and then I leave all of this as is. And then enable baseball cards is now defaulted to off. And even though I can't do this, I'm going to. I'm going to take credit for it, okay? I work at OTP now. And I said in the Slack that we need to turn that off. I was not the only one. I'm not the reason that they did, but did they ever have it turned off before I started working there? No. Ergo, am I the reason that they turned it off? You be the judge. You can really only come to one conclusion there, folks. I did it, you're welcome. But anyway, that it slows down the game. Nobody really liked them as far as uh, having them on by default. Somebody, I'm, somebody out there likes them, right? There's certainly somebody out there who uses them and respect to them, that's chill, but they should not be on by default because they do slow things down. Free agents wear suits. I never really clicked that on, but it is kind of cool. So um, I, I think it's fine if you want to have it on. It's a neat little thing you can do. It doesn't really change the game one way or the other. It's a little aesthetic thing that you can have on. And then none of this. Uh, so basically, like, let's say you wanted to do like major league players only. I think you could do update generate and it would cancel all the minor league ones. So it, this is where you would uh, update things if you put in like a picture pack too. I think you can download mods that have different faces. So this is where you would update that. Uh, but that's probably more of an advanced thing anyway. And if you're doing that, then you probably don't need my help to figure out how to do it. AI settings, I already talked about this at the beginning there, where I'm leaving it on the four clicks to the hard and then the default uh, as far as the favor veterans versus prospects. Now hard mode, I will eventually do hard mode. I'm not doing it right now. Um, because training's hard enough uh, for, for me. I, I find it difficult enough. I'm also not going to rip off the computer, so I'm fine not doing it right now. Uh, I will eventually do some Sims with it though, because it is fun, but I need my little, I'm, I'm Linus from Peanuts, man. I need my security blanket to make this work now. The reputation system, I'm gonna echo what some of my friends in the community have, PF Holden, old school sports. We like the idea of the system. I don't think it's quite working as intended right now. Uh, I think you're getting dinged for things a little bit too much to where it's really starting to hurt, even though you're not really doing anything to where you should be dinged to the degree that you are. So I think it needs to be honed a bit. I like the concept. I don't like it in practice. So for now, I'm not using it. Trade deadline day time limit. This is new. So on the new deadline date on uh, July 21st or whenever you set your deadline date to be, 
you will get these different uh, a number of periods for however many minutes that you want to choose to where the offers are coming in and you can send yours out and others are coming in and you get to assess them. And then as the timer goes down, so say you go down to four minutes, four minutes expires, the new, they respond to the ones that you sent out and they send new ones. So you can do this for up to 30 minutes if you want, or as short as one minute, or you don't have to do it at all. So I've had, I had it on four minutes initially, felt that that was a little too slow, I did eight. So now what happens if you do eight and after three minutes, you're done and you don't want anything? Well, up here at the MLB, it'll say deadline day, you'll click it again and it will reset to the next time period. So you don't have to wait through the whole eight minutes. So even if you want to do something big, you know, you. for those of you who don't watch my stream, you might not know that I take forever to do a, everything so some people were joking that 30 minutes wasn't long enough and they need an hour long for paul uh, i don't need an hour but if you want to have one where you like want to be super deliberate but sometimes you're not going to use all 30 minutes you can still get through it you're not going to have to wait all 30 minutes or all eight minutes or however many minutes you put it each time you can then fast forward if you're done in that time so i like to do eight minutes give myself some time and then if i'm done in a, uh, early enough boom we move on to the next one Player evaluation AI settings, 30, 50, 15, 5. Usually I leave it pretty close to the default. Um, I think in recent years, I've probably switched. I, this is different from the, the recent default. So I don't remember exactly what the previous default was. I, I should have maybe looked that up so I could compare. Because I usually like to put a little bit more juice on the ratings, right? Like like their skills. I don't want everything to be stats-based. But I, I, I don't have too much of a problem with this. Probably do 35, 45 here and then apply the changes. Um, but yeah, you can kind of set this to how you want. If you don't want the ratings to really matter, you can take this all the way down and make it all be based on the stats. So basically their ratings and how they're treated in the game, uh, how the AI will evaluate them will be based on how you split this up. Lineup selection, I like to do sabermetric because I think most of the teams in the league are doing splits favored stuff and you know even some of the teams that get clowned on for having a bad uh, analytical front office including my beloved tigers although with with the scott harris regime that's definitely going by the wayside but under avila they weren't really known for sabermetrics even they i think you know with hinch in, in tow started to do things a bit more sabermetric friendly so the the overall league i think does do more sabermetric stuff so that's why i switch it to almanac i don't do anything with that the database i don't mess with any of that now league settings we're getting into a whole nother can of worms here and i'm actually pulling up my uh little uh checklist here to make sure i'm going down everything properly okay so this is where you really start to get into the meat of your league if you want to edit ballparks the league structure the schedule league colors and logo you can really start to customize your league this is this is up to you how much you want to do on this I leave it default for the most part because I, I just do standard leagues. But if you want to do something different where you're making it AL and NL only and you get rid of the divisions, you come in here and you shift everything around and you do that. Or you want to make it one super league, you can do that. However you want to do it, this is where you're going to go ahead and do that. Um, let's see, then you can do update player ratings using live stats. So let's say you start uh, um, a, a league in June right and there's like some breakout players you know i'm wearing a reds hat right now and this guy graham ashcraft is a pitcher for them who looks like he could be a breakout he wasn't great last year so his stats coming into the game are pretty modest but let's say he does fulfill that breakout he starts missing bats like crazy to go with his 100 mile an hour sinker and he's probably more of like a 60 grade player right now come june right like let's say he's toting like a 250 era and a 108 whip with a 30 percent k rate well he'd be better than a 40 45 which i think is about what he is right now so you would click update player ratings using live stats and it would do it for everybody of course i'm just trying to name a player who might be a breakout down the line that you would want to get those stats in now of course it'll do it for everybody too so if one of your favorite players is having a bad season 
it's probably going to lower his output there because he's hitting, you know, 218 with four homers and he would have come into the season as a 60 and now he's down to a 50 if you do this. But this is a good this is a good feature here, the update player ratings using live stats. We could even do it right now just to see exactly what's happened here uh, 10 days into the season. Now, I don't have everyone's ratings committed to memory. There's one guy I'm going to check and it's Adam Duvall. Let's we'll see what he is. I don't again, I don't remember what he was, but if he's like a 60 right now, then you'll know that it was because of his his hot 10 days. This is where you would also expand uh, and schedule an expansion draft, schedule a fantasy draft, schedule a free agent draft if you wanted to do that, or you hate your league and you just said, F it and delete the whole damn league. You can also start injury free, right? Like right now, if you go to Houston, uh, if you go to any team, they have their injuries. I, I'm saying Houston because of a prominent injury they have, but Altuve is injured. He's out for two months the way it is in real life. If you want to start with none of that on, you can just say reset it all and I'll go from day one with no injuries. You can definitely do that. So this is where you would set all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can do a lot of different things here that you might want. This is more for more advanced players though, right? Those of you just starting, you don't need to be messing with all this. And then uh, say, same here on the roster functions and the import export functions. That's mostly going to be for more advanced players, so you don't necessarily have to worry about it. And then if you don't care about the major league teams and cities, you can mess with things here. And if you want to play with fictional players, you can randomize the player names, randomize the team nicknames, randomize the cities. You can do so many different things that you want to kind of customize your league how you want it. For now, we're doing a major league, uh, so we're going to leave it as is. By the way, this is just the same uh, pretty much as the league structure one right here. It's just a bigger screen of it, but that's pretty much what this is. And then the rules. Okay, so now we're getting into the rules here, and this is going to be stuff that you're going to want to do. I'm going to show you what I do. You can change it to how you want as far as how you want to run your league. I turn off the three batter minimum. I don't mind it in real life. It's I'm not shaking my fist at the sky saying how dare they it's fine i've talked about this a million times on my stream it fixed a problem that didn't really exist anymore the the loogie the lefty one out guy uh was kind of gone by the wayside anyway we weren't really seeing that as much so it was supposed to legislate out too many pitcher changes and sure sometimes there were uh, for example, you get like Tony La Russa in September. They'd call up all 40 players. That was back when you could do a 40-man roster in September. That was always stupid, by the way. That's one of the best changes they made, which was cutting down the September roster sizes. But he would put out like eight different pitchers uh, per game in September. So that was a nightmare. But for the most part, during the regular season, there wasn't a ton of one batter stuff. So it was meant to speed up the game, but it was already kind of out of the game. So it didn't really help. I don't mind it. It's made pitchers be a bit more well-rounded, right? If you're just a lefty guy, well, you're going to probably have to face some righties at, at, at different times. You're going to have to be better there. So I don't mind it in principle in the real life, but for my games, I like to go back to the one batter rule. And sometimes in a playoff situation, I'm calling in a loogie, man. I got to get Freddie Freeman out with runners on and one out. Boom. Here comes my lefty. And then they got two righties coming up right after. I'm going right to the righty because we don't have commercial breaks, so it doesn't matter. Modified extra innings, you can turn it off if you want. You don't like the ghost runner, turn it off. I leave it on for spring and regular season. I don't mind it. My compromise on that in real life would be to play 11 innings of quote unquote real baseball. Play it as is for the 10th and the 11th. And then if it's still tied, then you can go to the 12th because while I am a night owl who does like super long games that would go to like the 18th inning uh, on like a West Coast game. So now we're talking like three in the morning my time. Those, those are cool every once in a while, but they really do screw up teams. And sure, adjust, call up guys. I'm, no one's crying for the teams. I get it. But are they necessary? And do we really want to see like five minor leaguers come up to fill in for the guys that had to uh, be rested because they had to go all these extra innings? No. And plus, I don't even stay up that late anymore. So now selfishly, I don't even care because I go to bed at an adult time anyway. So I shouldn't have even said I'm an idol. I used to be, now I go to bed earlier. So I don't care about extra innings games going super deep. The Ghost Runner doesn't bother me that much. And honestly, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even care about ties in game like after the 12th inning. But again, I'm not turning it on or anything like that. I'm just saying they wouldn't kill me if MLB said ties after 12. It, it, it'd be it'd be fine y'all it'd be a change 
there'd be a lot of grumbling over it, but it wouldn't really matter. All this stuff, I'm keeping it the same because I'm, I'm trying to play a real MLB sort of uh, world here. You can change it to your heart's content though. You want active roster to be bigger? Go for it. Secondary roster, expanded roster, you can change all that. But I'm leaving all this the same all the way down here. Um, enable the rule five draft. Yes, you can change the date if you want. If you want it earlier in your off season or later, go for that. Now in the trading, this is the bonus periods that we were talking about, right? The timer that we set earlier, this is how many of them. So I changed it to eight. So there'll be four eight minute periods on July 31st that I will go through and get a bunch of trade offers sent to me and ones that I can send back out. Excuse me, so you can switch this up as much or as little as you want or turn it off completely. It's a new mechanic this year. I quite like it. It adds some intrigue. I think it's a lot fun, a lot more fun um, if you're streaming or making YouTube content to kind of build those storylines. It makes the trade deadline more immersive. You can also move your deadline if you'd like. I do allow trading of injured players. I also allow draft pick trading and I allow recently drafted players to be traded immediately because why not? Why do they have to stay for a year? Who gives a crap? So that, this is these are the settings that I do. Do what you like, what you think is going to be most fun for you. Uh, AI trading frequency. This, there's been some discussion on this one. A lot of people saying that there's too many trades on average and some of them are crazy. So they've been moving it down to low. I've been okay with it on average. Now, in fairness, I've only done my red series that I'm doing on YouTube and then like a tiger series that I was doing in the beta. So I haven't done enough to necessarily say one way or the other. So I'm leaving it on average for now, but it's subject to change. Amateur draft. I actually agree with my buddy P.F. Holden to continue referencing him and just biting everything he does. Uh, but I've, I've always liked this, moving it back to June. I don't mind that real life puts it in July uh, with the All-Star break and everything. That's kind of cool. But for me, I kind of like to split things up. I like to have June be when we're going to do the draft and then uh, July be when we're going to have the All-Star break and then the trade deadline. If it's all clustered in July, July becomes a crazy month uh, of sims so i like to s separate it out you will see me in all my sims uh move the draft to june although i say all my sims i don't think i moved it in the reds one so maybe not all of them but generally speaking i do like to have the draft moved to june i leave it at 20 rounds um, I, le I leave all this to the default right now. I haven't found any real issues with it, so I'm fine leaving it as is. I do have the lottery. I like that winter meetings is when they um, when they do it. I haven't changed the odds or anything like that. Yeah, so I leave all that the same. Financials, I don't mess with any of this. You guys heard me talking about the coefficient. I'm, I'm a stupid idiot. I obviously don't know anything about this, so why would I mess with any of this? Options, okay? So this is kind of like rules, but... Not, not as strict, I guess, right? I, I've always found the rules and options pages to be similar to the point where sometimes I forget where a, an option is, if it's under the rules or the options page. But here, you can have a lot more preference of, of things that you want, right? So I like automatic evolution for a lot of things, but there's some things that when they happen, I found myself always either hating them or instantly changing them. So I figure, okay, why not just turn those off then? avoid that potential number one is the secondary roster anytime they cut it i lose my mind i hate it they go to 38 man roster i hated that those two extra spots it killed me now it did kind of add more talent being cycled around the league and overall it can be kind of good especially if you're running a uh, lower budget team so maybe guys are getting waived more and you can play the waiver wire but overall i didn't like it so uh, i i stuck with the 38 for like three or four years in that sim and then i eventually changed it back because I, like, I hate that and then the designated hitter rule even when the nl didn't have the dh i would always give it to them so i'm pro designated hitter nobody needs to see pitchers batting I'm sorry, y'all. It's just the truth. I'm here to spit facts. So I don't want them to change that, right? And I had one sim where the AL got rid of the DH. I was like, uh, 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 we are not doing that. So instead of having to deal with that, I just turn it off. But active roster size, okay, more or less pitching, more or less offense, nicknames, team relocation, even IL length, all of those, they can change. I'll work with it. The awards, I generally change the gold glove back. I think I mentioned this in another video um, 
about the platinum stick. I, I've gotten used to calling it plat stick or platinum stick, you know, um, as opposed to silver slugger. So I just leave it. But silver slugger is fine too. You know what I wish I could do? You can create a custom award, but you can only create a custom award name. You can't really set how it's voted, like what it is. So it, this does not answer what I want, but what I would like, I've always had a problem with pitchers winning the MVP for one specific reason. When we're doing Hall of Fame and talking about like the best players ever, we put Cy Youngs and MVPs on the same level, which inherently I understand, right? A Cy Young is very important and so is an MVP, but why do pitchers have the eligibility to win both? And of course a hitter can only win one of them. So unless you make like the Hank Aaron award or some other award, I, I would like it to be the Hank Aaron award because that's already out there and it's for the best hitter. But unless you make something like that on a par with the Cy Young, I don't really want pitchers winning the MVP because that just seems unfair that they can win these two awards and then hitters don't have their own award that has the same prestige and cachet. Oh, Henry came in here. What's up, buddy? As the Cy Young. So I turn off pitchers being able to win the MVP hitter award for MVP, even though it's called most valuable player, it's not called most valuable hitter, and then Cy Young for pitchers, and those are kind of equivalent awards. So that's my thing. I wish we could do a custom award where we say it's like best hitter and pitchers can't win it, and then I would let MVP be won by both, and I'd be more open to voting for the pitchers to win MVP. But until then, I'm turning it off pitchers. Even my favorite pitcher ever, Justin Verlander, won an MVP. I'm glad he did. That's cool because that's going to bolster his Hall of Fame candidacy. Of course, nowadays he's a walk-in Hall of Famer, but overall, I don't really like it. So that's what I do. That's my little uh, diatribe there on pitchers winning the MVP. Allow AI voting, yes, because I don't always vote. Um, so I, if they didn't vote, then there would be no winners. Enable manual Hall of Fame voting, yes. I do vote sometimes, but I, it's not a big deal for me with the Hall of Fame. But I also do open it up to 20 because why is there a limit anyway? Why? That's so stupid. Why, why, why is there any sort of limit? Um, there's no need for a limit, so I just open it up because some years the ballot is clustered and you're cluttered rather, and you need to get more than 10 votes in there to get everybody who's viable. I'm not gonna vote for 20 guys every year no matter what and put in a bunch of like mediocre dudes in, but I'll tell you what, the second that Curtis Granderson comes free, uh, comes on the ballot, I'm voting for him every year. Okay, he's my favorite player ever. Is he a true Hall of Famer? No, I, I can be honest about that, but I'll vote for him in this game every single year. And then the milestones, I leave them. Um, you see that they've been adjusted down. Like the game understands that 300 wins, that's not really happening anymore. So 200 is where it needs to be. Uh, same with career home runs. It used to be kind of like 500 was the goal. So I think these are all fine. I leave that alone. Um, I don't mess with any of this stuff over here as far as the schedule settings. I've, I've noticed that rainouts are more frequent this year, and I'm totally here for it. I've no, been noticing, you know, you, you hit the sim button game, uh, the little check over here, and then it, the game disappears and it moves into a double header the next day or into another series. I like that. I'm seeing that a lot more this year. I'm not sure I saw it at all last year, and I've never not had rainouts on. I don't know. Maybe rainouts are new. I don't think they are, but either way, I like that they're more frequent, and I even had unfortunately it was not a good result for us but i even had a game that was shortened to five innings and we got no hit and they, the freaking game log wrote it up as like a legit no hitter and so my chat my twitch chat was like clowning me for getting no hit by the pirates i'm like that's not that's not a real no hitter stop it that is not real um and then balance schedule sometimes i do switch to a balance schedule the real life MLB has switched to a more balanced schedule. It's not balanced, but it is more balanced. So I'm fine with the current schedule at this point. And then I often will take this down to four weeks for spring. Four or five is fine. I'm leaving it at the default right now just because I'm not playing this out anyway, but sometimes I will take it down to four because we don't need that much spring training. As far as all-star game stuff goes, do you want popularity to influence the vote? I leave it on high because for me, I am fine with superstars that aren't having the best year making the All-Star Game. I don't think the All-Star Game needs to be a half season, best players only type of thing. Reward those guys, sure. There's enough spots to get those dudes on. But if I got like, you know, Manny Machado, who's hitting like 275, 
with 15 homers. You know, he's got like an 840 OPS, which is like perfectly solid. And then some Johnny Two Cents third baseman um, that that doesn't make it, and and Machado makes it over him. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think every half season out of nowhere, dude, every Brian LaHare of the world, I don't think they need to make it. It's an all-star game, and especially when it comes to the vote, right? So if, if the fans vote in Machado over that guy, and that guy doesn't get in because of all the other stuff with the with the way the reserves work, so be it. That just doesn't bother me. Vote in Nolan Arenado, vote in Manny Machado. Now, if they're hitting like 180 and they're really not having a good season, there's maybe a limit. But for the most part, I don't mind that the popularity influences the all-star vote. Stars are stars for a reason. Now, as far as forced all teams to be represented, I can I can take it or leave it on that one. I don't think it's necessary. I think it was more of a thing of the past when the internet didn't exist, so you couldn't watch your players all the time, especially if you moved away from where your team played. So you get a little flavor of your team in the all-star game, but nowadays, I don't think it's necessary. So I'm kind of I'm kind of a take it or leave it as far as that one goes. I don't always remember to check it off, but uh, since I'm here doing this video, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. All this other stuff is totally fine. Playoffs, I'm fine with the regular playoffs as they are, but you can customize them to your heart's content. If you wanna change things, by all means, go ahead and do that. And then for the players, I don't really mess with any of this. I'm pretty happy with what they do as far as uh, the international scouting discoveries, the uh, inter international established free agents. I like utilizing this pool to find some fun free agents that come over. Now, of course, they used to come over from established leagues, including the Redacted League, and that was always great. Uh, now they're kind of just made up, and that's totally fine by me. And then generate players from independent leagues. Of course, I'd like to see that as well. So that's all good for me. Historical, I don't mess with any of this. And then stats and AI. Now, this is where you can have some leeway uh, over how your league is going to work, right? And you can kind of go through these and set them up how you want. You can select the year. If, the, if you think a particular year is the perfect statistical year, you can go through and you select that year and your league will play similar to that, to that year. So you can definitely go through and do that. I have normally been changing it to where, so I think before last year, I think there were more strikeouts than hits in the uh, in the default, and I would always flip that. I think there's too many strikeouts in the game. I'm a big pitching guy. I love pitching. I love that there's so much great pitching out there, but I hate that the ball is not in play very often these days. And I like all these new rules that have influenced offense so far this year. I like that stealing is uh, more prevalent. I like all that. So I would usually tone down the strikeouts a bit. You can still have guys dominating. I don't mind that some relievers are gonna have like 35, 40% strikeout rates and even some starters, the best of the best are gonna have 30% strikeout rates. That's okay, like they're, they're great, they deserve that, but I want the ball in play more. So I would usually tone up the hits and tone down the strikeouts. It is higher, more hits than strikeouts right now. Push come to shove, I'd probably go a little bit more on like a 299 BABIP, which is where the league used to live. And that would probably get some more hits in play. Maybe maybe put it up another, uh, uh, let's do another 500. So we'll go 42,000 hits and then 40,000 strikeouts. Maybe something like that. Um, and then do I have to auto calculate? I don't know if I, I think I have to auto calculate it to get it to change. I don't, I don't know if the numbers changed. Hang on, let me let me change it to 39,000 and then auto cal can see if this 1.101 changes because I'm a moron and I didn't pay attention. Okay, it did, it did, there you go. So you can change this to your heart's content or pick a year that you want. You can also get down here on the stamina piece uh, and change some things if you'd like. Now, you might be interested in lowering the starting pitcher's stamina as a way to kind of um, put the pitch clock effect in, right? That's one of the biggest changes here because we're at a point, I mentioned this with the strikeouts being too plentiful. The velo is off the charts, right? If your bullpen doesn't have like four guys who can throw 100, you're the biggest loser team in the world. Like, it's unbelievable. Having a guy who throws 100 right now uh, and you only have one, what are you doing wrong? Like it, it, it's, it's at that point. 
One of the things that the pitch clock is going to do is impact the velo without doing it in a weird way, right? Like by moving the, the mound back, which I actually wouldn't be totally against, or even moving it down a little bit. Those are ways that you could do it, but I know people are reluctant to move it back 60 feet, six inches, I get it. Uh, but I think even six inches moving it to 61 feet would have a, a, an effect on velo without completely ruining everyone's arm. But either way, the pitch clock, when you have to pitch faster, your velo is going to go down. Generally speaking, for most guys, it's going to. I, the comparison I always use is when you're idle, it's like a stamina bar in a video game. You gain more stamina. Pitchers have learned this. Pitching coaches have learned this. So they've told their pitchers, take your time, especially relievers. You're building back up so you can keep throwing 100 mile an hour BBs. So if you want to lower this a little bit as a way of kind of impacting uh, or, or showing the pitch clock impact, you could kind of do that by way of, of lowering these if you want. That's definitely something that you could do. And then we've seen that the stolen bases are through the roof right now. And you can definitely raise that up. In fact, I'm going to, I'm gonna change it to 0.9. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do 102. Um, and then success rate, I mean, they're, they're kind of way higher than this right now. I'm gonna do 72. So we'll do that. And then um, on this side here with the general strategic tendencies, again, do you want pitchers to be going deeper into games? Do you want relievers to be going deeper into games? You can definitely be turning that however you like. Um, now, always go slow, right? Always do incremental. Say like, I want relievers. I don't want one inning only relievers. I want guys to be like Sparky Lyle and Mike Marshall back in the day and go multi innings. Well, don't go all the way to very slow because then they'll be going like seven innings. Just do one click or two clicks, right? And see how it plays. Always do things in moderation when you're changing. See how it plays and then go from there because uh, if, you, if you ramp things up too quickly, it can get really wild. I'm also gonna go to often on the stolen bases. So I'm, I'm changing multiple factors here. I'm upping the attempts, the success, and the frequency here because that's what real baseball did. With these rule changes, teams are running wild. And yes, it's only like 12 days into the season, but even this small sample is enough to say that there is a tangible, massive change here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my leagues and that's something I'm gonna do consistently. I also moved the catcher framing impact back up. Um, I think it's been nerfed a bit. Uh, last year's game, I think nerfed it. So I last year I was moving it up to seven. This year I'm moving it up to six, just to see. I, again, go incremental, moving it up one point, see how it works. Um, I like to have guys, and this is for your catcher ability. And uh, we'll get into that when we go look at some ratings. And then of course, infield shifts are banned. And then when it says infield shifts normal, they can still shift within their side. Banning the infield shifts is the exaggerated shift, right? So in the real world, they can also, they can move around a bit as long as two guys are on each side of the base. So that's that's still here. And you can even turn that up to extreme if you want, because teams are, are still gonna do that. But banning infield shifts means you can't send another guy to the other side there. So that's the league setup. Now let's get into the league. And I wanna show you my custom views here. I, think I see this video is getting kind of long. Could have split it up, but I figured let's just do one mega video. And I, what I need to do is put it in the chapters and that way people can go directly to the things. So one of the things that gets a lot of comments when I'm streaming is, oh dude, how do you get those views? Like, how did you do that? Cause I have a lot of custom views. So first, first thing I wanna show you is the profile page view. Notice that these stats here are not the ones that you see by default, WRC plus, war, strikeout and walk percentage, um, and, and you can see, I'm not gonna read every one, you guys can see them. So this is my own custom thing. Well, how the heck did you get that? I'm gonna show you. So you go to a player page, you go to batting stats for batters, and of course, bat pitching stats for pitchers. You go view, edit. Now it tells you right here, the first row will be the default shown on player pages, which is that page that I was just showing you. And you can see that spore batting is up there. It normally starts like this. Well, my uh, pretend that the sport batting one isn't there. Usually it's just the basic and extended, expanded rather, and that's what's normally on a page. And there you go, that's what you normally see. So then you go in, you edit. Now, if this wasn't already here, what I would do is I would add a stat row, click on it here, move it up to the top, go in and edit it, 
and then put the stats that I want on there. Now, be careful not to make it too cluttered, right? That's something that uh, took me some time to learn, both from a streaming and YouTubing standpoint for people to be able to see it better, but also from my own standpoint. They, they got too cluttered. I'm adding like so much crap on there. Some of it's redundant. It's like chill. You don't need all of that stuff. So let me delete this one since obviously that's not what I want. And let me show you the, uh, the one that I have. Move that back up, edit that. So I've got games, plate appearances, Home runs, ribbies, runs, strikeout walk percentage, the triple slash, ISO, which is slugging minus average. If you're quick on math and you can do all the math in your head, good for you. I'm a dumb idiot. I can't. Uh, so I want the ISO to just be right there. Same with the OPS. If you can add OBP and slugging super quickly in your head, good for you. Am I exposing myself as being a complete brainlet for not being able to do that very quickly? Sure, but that is, that's how my brain is. It's not great with, uh, in my head, math. BABIP, WRC plus, that's weighted runs created plus. Uh, OPS plus is another category similar to that. Basically it takes OPS or weighted runs created and puts it on a scale where 100 is average and every point above 100 is a percentage point better than average. Every point below is a percentage point worse than average. War and then the stolen base success rate. So let's go look at that now. And you saw that it was already there. So basically what this says is last year, Adley Rutschman was 32% better than league average, which is quite good, by the way. WRC Plus, OPS Plus, they're kind of similar. I like WRC Plus a bit more. You can go to Fangraphs and read more on into it into, as to why I think it's a bit better than OPS Plus. Either will work, though. I think if you're using either on this page, you're, you're, you're doing right because you're going to get that measure that quickly tells you how good or bad they are. Um, and, and it's better than standard OPS because the league changes. Remember when we were talking about how leagues can evolve over here? Where was that? That was in league settings, uh, options, more offense, less offense, more pitching, less pitching. So as baseball evolves, an 800 something, an 806 OPS isn't the same WRC plus every year. In like uh, the 2019 rabbit ball era, an 806 OPS probably would have been closer to like a 110 WRC plus because offense was plentiful. Last year, offense wasn't off the charts. It wasn't dead ball either, but it was, you know, an 806 uh, was a pretty damn good number. It's a 132 plus your environment matters as well. If I put up an 806 OPS in Coors versus putting it up in the new Camden with the, with the wall in left field that is 500 feet back those are two different environments and wrc plus and ops plus both account for that which is why these are good stats so i would definitely recommend putting one or the other in there you can put your choice i like wrc plus i work at fangraphs i'm a fangraphs guy so that's what i put in there war um if you're not familiar with war you can ask in the comments for a better explanation and i'll point you to a link i can't tell you how war is calculated i know what it's trying to say though it's wins above replacement it's saying how much better is this guy than picking up a average johnny two cents from the miners now it's a bit of a theoretical right because not everyone's minor league system is the same if you go get a minor leaguer from the detroit tiger system versus the dodger system the dodgers guy's going to be markedly better nine out of ten times right so i understand that there's some like flaws in war in terms of precision but that's why we don't use war as an end-all be-all okay i'm a stats nerd i love advanced stats. i like war but don't, don't ever use it as a conversation ender and say that he's a 4.1 war and the guy you like is a 3.9 my guy's better shut your mouth it is not that precise now if war if, if I'm comparing a guy who has 4.1 war and you're trying to say a guy with 2.1 war is better than him that's a bit more definitive two two whole uh wins that's a bit tougher to argue for you to say that your guy is better the bigger gaps that you get the more that war is indeed pretty strong but at the margins there between like one and 1.5 war there's argument for debate there there's reasons to say okay yeah your guy has a one point Oh, win a war advantage but here's what my guy does better and war might not be capturing that for example I don't think Otani is perfectly captured in war. So everyone was saying how much uh, better war's judge, uh, judge's war was than his, and they were using that as a conversation ender. And I'm like, well, okay, I respect that it is, and that is a point in favor of judge, but I don't think that the stat 
does a great job of accounting for the fact that he's two different superstar players. So anyway, I don't need to get derailed on that, but I do like war. It's a good shorthand there. And I like strikeout and walk percentages as opposed to per nines. That's actually, uh, per nines is what they would use for pitchers. I don't think they are, there even is a per nine for hitters, right? Let me look real quick. Yeah, it would just be the, the whole totals. So you should use strikeout and walk percentage. They're just better because the denominator is plate appearances or batters faced for pitchers as opposed to innings for pitchers. And the reason that it's more precise is because on the extremes, you can have a guy who gives up a ton of base runners, but gets a bunch of strikeouts. Think about like Robbie Ray before he figured out some command and actually won a uh, Cy Young. He would get three strikeouts in an inning pretty frequently, but oftentimes he would walk two guys and give up a hit. So he had like a nine K nine because he would, he would, he would get the strikeout or I guess that would be a 27 K nine if he got three. But anyway, he would have that and you're like, Oh, he's, he's the better strikeout guy versus someone like Cliff Lee, who's super precise and doesn't walk anybody. and might not have as many strikeouts, but his strikeouts per plate appearance were good. So the bottom line is, I just think that strikeout rate and walk rate are better. The, they're gonna be more precise overall. There's not gonna be a ton of discrepancy there where that if you're using per nine, you're a moron. Like, I don't think that it's that deep, but I just think that it's better in general. And I'm trying to think of a more recent example and I'm, I'm failing to come up with one. That's why I use Cliff Lee and, <laughs> and Robbie Ray. But let's look at Kyle Gibson real quick. So you can see my pitcher one. I have the strikeout and walk percentages. You know, 20% K rate, 7% walk rate. Averages, I think I think the average for starters, actually, let me just look it up instead of just guessing. Might as well here. I think it's like 23% for starters is the, uh, the average strikeout rate and 8% walk rate, I think. But let me look at last year because this year is still a little early for the samples to be settled. So last year it was 22%, 21.6, we'll round up, we'll call it 22% and seven and a half percent walk rate, we can round up, call it 8%. So he's got a, a below average strikeout rate and an above average walk rate. Above average in this case means it's lower. I know that's kind of confusing, but you want a lower number in walk rate. So he's better than, than the league average there. And then the strikeout minus walk rate again, just easier than doing the math in my head. Can I do 20.1 minus 6.7, yes, I actually can do those numbers pretty easily, but I like to just, boom, be able to look at it. ERA, WHIP, BABIP, FIP, that's Fielding Independent Pitching. Basically, it takes your core skills, puts it on an ERA scale, and kind of kind of takes out some of the variance. A lot of times we call it luck. Sometimes it's not necessarily luck, right? Like, if you have a 450 BABIP allowed, there's probably some bad luck there because that's pretty crazy. The league average is around 290 to 300 for BABIP for pitchers. But pitchers can also have some control over their BABIP where they're very difficult to hit or very easy to hit. So we've learned over the years that we shouldn't just put everyone at a 300 BABIP and say that that's it. Some guys have control over theirs or lack some control that should make them higher. Well, FIP does kind of baseline it a little bit better there. So you can get a better idea of where their core skills are. And FIP is a better indicator for future performance than ERA. So you look at last year, Kyle Gibson had a 505 ERA, but a 448 FIP. So he's, he's a little bit better than we thought based on what he did last year. That's kind of the shorthand that it's telling you. And then hit nine and homer nine, why don't you use homer percentage and hit percentage? Well, for one, they don't have them. Uh, I, actually, they kind of do. Batting average against is essentially a hit percentage, if you think about it, right? A, 290, a 293 average is a 29.3% hit rate, but we don't, we don't do it like that. We just say it's a 293 average. And then as far as home run rate, I just, I don't see it used, right? If they had it, I would certainly use it. I mean, there are some sites where you can do it, but it's not prevalent enough to where you could tell me that somebody has a 2% home run rate and that I instantly know what that is. But if you tell me 1.3 homer nine, well, I know that that sucks. So that's why I like that. And then saves, shutdowns, meltdowns, and war. So saves I have up there just because I, I don't know, it's kind of a fun stat. I don't really care about saves. Obviously you have to be in the ninth inning to do, to get a save anyway. So it's not particularly useful overall in terms of telling somebody's talent. But if I have like a superstar closer, I wanna know if he's setting like the saves record or something. 
shutdowns and meltdowns. What's that? So that's a stat that you can learn more about over at Fangraphs as well. I'm a company man. Um, and you go over to the glossary, go under pitching stats, and then you can find it uh, SD slash MD. In fact, library.fangraphs.com slash pitching slash SD hyphen MD will get you there. No one's going to go in and type that in, but if you wanted to, there, you can. So what is a shutdown? What is a meltdown? It's based on win probability added, which is basically giving relievers credits or debits, you know, positive or negative, depending on how much they impact the win probability added of the team. If they change it to the positive by 6% or more, or if they hurt it to the negative by 6% or more, then they get a shutdown on the positive or a meltdown on the negative. And I think it's a really good stat in terms of really showing who the best relievers are in a given year. Way better than saves and holds because holds are a pretty funky stat. I don't mind if your fantasy league uses them. I'm not, I'm not casting aspersions at your league or anything. It's better than, actually, I'm not even gonna say it's better than using just saves. Use what you want, right? If you wanna use that, then fine. But uh, let me see if I can get the saves and holds here. Uh, or I mean the, the shutdowns and meltdowns. I just think, obviously we don't use, see it used in fantasy right now because win probability added is a pretty niche thing that you're not really gonna see a fantasy site figure out how to use. Um, so I totally understand that, but I think it would be better if they did. Okay, so we can't get last year's saves or shutdowns and meltdowns, which is kind of a bummer. Actually, let me turn these off. Maybe that will help. Nope, I guess we're not. Okay, so they don't they don't have them for last year, but in a given year, you will be able to get them um, as a as a leaderboard thing for your for your leagues. And I just think it's better, right? I want to know the guys that are getting it coming in, getting the most shutdowns, and I want to know the guys who are blowing it like crazy. So in my Reds league right now, I've got Matt Brash, who I do like. He's a good pitcher, but he's kind of volatile, and so he has a ton of shutdowns, but he also has a ton of meltdowns. So I've kind of taken him out of my stoppers role because his control sucks. And so that's a bit of a problem. So anyway, I like shutdowns and meltdowns and that's why it's on my player page. Now, let's get into more of some of the custom views here as we move over an hour into this video. So I have different views based on different things in the game. Makes sense, right? Instead of having to customize them every single time, it makes sense to just have them locked and loaded. And I will tell you, your settings you have to set every time you start a new sim. That's kind of a bummer, but that's the way it is. Your views will be with you in every uh, sim that you do once you create them, right? Now, I, pulled, I actually pulled these over from 2023, which I can teach you how to do that. I should have written down how to do it because I, I have it actually in a Word doc because I just don't, I don't know it off the top of my head. And uh, I'd have to go through and look the, look for that. Maybe I'll do a little separate video on that. Just a quick like 10 minute video on how to do that. So I brought them all over instead of remaking them. So the default ones, of course, are spore batting and spore pitching. And you can see what I've got here. It's the same thing. You go, you customize and you pick what you want. I got the I got the few ratings there. I got these general tabs and then I have the ones on the uh, batting stats. And this is what it looks like. And this gives me a good snapshot of what I want to know during the season, right? Contact power, eye, strikeouts, overall and potential I don't really need, but it's a good shorthand. In fact, I shouldn't put them there because I'm trying to get people to look at overalls less um, because they're, they're, they're don't always, they don't always lead you in the right direction, right? You should care what the makeup of somebody's skills are, not what the single number is. But anyway, I have them up there. It's, it's something I've always had, and so I've just kind of kept it there, inertia. What I really do recommend is putting the opt used here, which is options used. This is really going to help you when you're trying to make call-ups and send downs. So you only get three options as a player. There's sometimes you can get a, f a fourth exemption, but I don't think the game... Like the game acknowledges guys who have that, but I don't think that you can get one in the game. So for example, I wanna say Brendan McKay has been given a fourth option, and I don't even know if he's on this team anymore. Where is Brendan McKay? Maybe I should just look him up. Brendan McKay, where are you? Brendan McKay is a Durham Bull. Is he already on the IL though? He is, okay, great. Well, anyway. 
He's now out of option years. Last year, he had a, a specialty fourth option because of all the injuries he's dealt with. So sometimes you'll see four there, but for the most part, it's zero, one, two, or three, okay? So don't, don't get too hung up on that. But anyway, now I know that if I wanna send down Mateo or Urias, I can't do that without passing them through waivers, which means everyone in the league will have a chance to get them if they want. So that will tell you, you know, like when somebody comes off the IL, let's say James McCann comes off the IL and I need to send somebody down. I mean, that's actually a bad example because I'm not going to carry more than two catchers anyway. So it's going to be Anthony Benboom regardless, but let's just pretend that he was a middle infielder or something and I was going to bring him off and I'm like, oh, Urias is hitting, you know, 111. Let me send him down. You try to go send him down and it says, boom, you got to clear him through waivers. So then you would go to waive and designate player for assignment. He'll be on irrevocable waivers, meaning anyone can claim him and he'll be there for a week. If nobody claims him, then you can send him down to AAA. Now, if they get to a certain level, I want to say five years of service time, they can refuse that demotion if they want. So if they're a veteran player and you're trying to send them out, they might refuse that. So let's say that we we got to there. Obviously, I can't show it without simming forward. Um, but you would get a pop-up like that that says the player refuses to be demoted. At that point, if you can't trade him and you still don't want to put him back on the major league team, then you got to cut him. That's all there is to it. So um, I do like to have the options used there. On sec, that's on the secondary roster. This isn't particularly useful during the season because to be on the major league team, they have to be on the secondary roster. So it's always going to say yes. But when you come into spring training, you will call up guys from the minors that will be on the team trying to make the club and they won't always be on the secondary roster. So then let's say you're going through and you're looking at all the uh, spring training stats and obviously there's no stats here to, to show you, but you know, your best guy has a 10, 12 OPS and he's killing it. You're like, okay, he, he's going to make the team, but it will say no here that he's not on the secondary roster. So then you need, you need to go here and put him on the secondary roster. And we have tons of spots right now, so it doesn't matter. But after a while, you will get full and you'll be like, damn, I need to move somebody off the secondary roster so that I can put this guy on the team, et cetera, et cetera. So I just leave it there. Even though it's really only useful for spring training, I just leave it because I used to have it be uh, for spring training and minor leagues only. Cause look at, uh, I go to my minor leagues. Now it's actually useful because none of these guys are on the secondary roster. And you can see, okay, I don't have any of these guys. Wait, are, okay, that's why they that's why they have such a light secondary roster. So let's put a bunch of guys on the 40 here, just to show y'all. So now we go over to the minors and boom. Okay, now you're looking to call somebody up. Uh, okay, I wanna cut Keegan Aiken. Sorry, Keegan Aiken, this is just for the video. He's cut and I want to call somebody up. You go over and I usually sort by on the secondary roster. Now, you don't always have to do this because if you have room and say Brandon Young is having like a great season, right? Like let's just pretend that he's popping off. You go over here and you see that you have plenty of space on the 40. Well, then you can call him up. But let's say you're at 40 out of 40. Uh, you don't have any space. Then you need to know who's on the secondary roster. DL Hall's on it. Boom, I can call him right up, no problems. Let's say I tried to call up Ryan Watson though. Promote him. Wait, oh, it allowed me because the secondary roster isn't full. Hang on, let me let me just show you what it looks like when the secondary roster is full. All right, and then we're gonna get rid of Ryan McKenna because he doesn't know how to catch fly balls. Okay, and then we go down here. Triple A on the secondary roster. I really want to bring up Lewin Diaz. Okay. I keep messing up my own thing because I cut somebody who wasn't on the 40 man because I'm an idiot, y'all. You have to understand I am a moron, okay? So that one didn't show it very, very well because there was a 40 man spot available. So let's say that we have a spot. Cole Irvin, you're getting cut. Let's try again, Paul. And then let's make sure that the 40 man is full. Okay. So now we have a roster spot, right? We're 27 out of 28, but we're 40, 40. 
and I want to call up Darwin's and Hernandez. Promote and Oh, dang it. So there you go. You guys probably understood it, but I wanted to show it just so that you can see what it looks like then. And so then you go and you say, okay, Mike Bauman, no dice, get out of here. Now Darwin's in can come up and it'll automatically put him on the secondary roster there. So anyway, that's the main view, the spore batting and the spore pitching. Here's what the spore pitching looks like. Let me just show you that one. I've got stuff, contact, pitcher babbit, home run rate, stamina, overall and potential. It's a little cluttered because I'm keeping the overall and potential and I added the home run rate and the babbit. In previous years, I just had movement along with these. So there was, there's only one extra column. So it's not that cluttered. And then I got the options used. I got the secondary SPF. That is not how protected they are in the sun. SPF and RPF are pitcher fatigue levels for starting and relieving. So this is going to be handy in the season. Remember how I was mentioning earlier about the rainouts. Let's say you get a, a rainout and you have a double header coming up. Well, it will be helpful to know who can go on a given day. Um, and this will just quickly tell you, like, let's say you do have a double header and Austin Voth uh, is at 100%, which he is right now because there's been no games. Well, then you can put him in the rotation easily and he can fill in the spot for you. And oh, that I'm actually glad that that showed that so I can show you something about the managers real quick. Uh, but yeah, and then I got same stats that I had on the other other pages there. I got the shutdowns, meltdown, saves, games, games started, innings, strikeout, walk rate, blah, blah, blah. You get it. All right, let me go over to the staff rules real quick, just because it, because it showed that with the personnel. If you have a manager, Brandon Hyde. Oh, wait, why didn't it let me? Your manager doesn't allow you to change the pitching staff. Oh, 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 okay, 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 sorry. So actually, Brandon Hyde does allow you to do things. Uh, he's all green, so he'll allow you to do whatever you want. Um, but the reason it didn't allow me is because check the gear over here and I I have it set to allowing him. Now, this is probably something I should have gotten into before the views. I will freely admit that I went in the wrong order here. Um, I didn't pay attention to my my freaking uh, my my outline here. I was supposed to talk about delegating duties before I got into the views. My fault, y'all. This is, goes back to the beginners, okay? And those, and, and not even just beginners, right? Because I don't want anyone to be like, oh, I'm not a beginner and like feel like I'm talking down on you or anything. No. As deep or as shallow as you want, right? If you just want to be the GM and you're not trying to set the lineups and the pitching staff and the player strategies and do all the minor league stuff, you want to do the trades, draft the players, sign the international guys, and that's it. You're building the team and then you want to trust your personnel to do everything else. This is where you can set that. So right now it's already set to have the manager do the lineups, depth charts, pitching staff and player strategies. And you want to do the active moves, right? Uh, if you want to do ups and downs, uh, promotions and demotions, IL, you can have that or you can have them set that, right? I will build the team. But if you want to move guys around, Michael Elias, go for it. Obviously, if you don't want to do trades or release players now, this, well, actually this would be the reverse. Maybe you just want to manage the team and you don't want to do the player signings and everything. Then maybe th this is why you would turn this on. But if you're just going to be a general manager, of course you wouldn't turn off the transactions. You would still want to do that. Same with the draft and the trades and all that setting the budgets. Maybe you don't want to set the scouting development budgets and the ticket price, which is what you do over here these two things right here. And then the ticket price is already set for now, but during the off season, actually during the season, you'll be able to change it too. So if you're doing well, you can move the price up. If you're doing poorly, you can move it down. Or if you're doing poorly, you can move it up because you're a jerk. That's really up to you. But anyway, you can set these however you want to go as deep or as shallow as you want. If you're a beginner or if you're just, you're new to the game, and you're just kind of overwhelmed, maybe turn everything in the minor leagues over to the minor league folks, right? You don't want to worry about it. You're just trying to get everything figured out with the major league team. You want your manager to run the on the field team. You want your minor leagues managers and your uh, assistant GM to do all the minor league stuff. And you're in control of everything else. That's totally fine. Maybe you don't even want to deal with the international stuff. Boom. Turn it over to him. Assign instructor roles. Boom. Turn it over to the manager, Brandon Hyde. What's that? You go over to staff roles. It's right here. 
So let me go back to that real quick and turn it off just to show you guys. So I just asked AI just so it was easy, but if you didn't, if you want to do it, then you can see here, okay, you can do that, that. Now, Tony Mansolino is good at everything, but if you put him in everything, then he'll be overworked. So that's why you need uh, diversity there so that you, can, you don't have one guy trying to do everything. This is also with the staff cohesion that I was talking about earlier. They're content right now, even though Chris Holt, the pitching coach, doesn't like personable people and neither does Michael Elias because they're assholes. And so they have four people that they don't really mesh with. That could affect the team down the line. Right now, they're content, but if they start losing and they start pointing fingers, it could be a problem. So the way I focus on it, and I, I need to get more clarification from the devs, but I feel like the manager, bench coach, pitching coach, hitting coach, and the uh, first and third base coaches, they should kind of be their own unit to where their personalities really tightly correspond. I don't think that the scouting director should be too greatly impacted by the on-field staff. Same with the team trainer and same with the assistant GM. Now, they should be somewhat affected, but for me, I'm willing to have those guys not mesh as much with the on-field staff and in my own head thinking like, because why would they have to? I might be hurting myself doing that, but generally it hasn't necessarily caused me to have bad cohesion in, in the past. I make sure that the manage the, that the on-field staff is as good as I can get it. And then the other guys, if they can match up, great. But if I have a scouting director who does everything I want, ooh, Highly Favors Tools is, is exactly what I like, by the way. Um, and if he was all green here with like all excellence and Highly Favors Tools, but he hated everybody on the on-field staff, them's the breaks. I would I would take my chances with that. So I don't know if I'm hurting myself with that or not. I will get more clarification. But for the most part, I would make sure that the on the field staff, the manager through the third base coach, they're meshing well. That's what I would try to make sure I'm getting uh, a cohesive unit on. So that's just a quick little detour there on delegation and staff cohesion. Turn this on as much or as little as you want because you want to have fun with the game. You don't want it to be a chore. You don't want it to be too overwhelming. So don't feel like you're not playing the game right if you turn a bunch of stuff on auto. Uh, plus, if you turn it on, you know, your personnel controlling it, it will encourage you to get better personnel, right? Like if you think Brandon Hyde isn't cut out for the job because he's kind of decent everywhere and a bunch of uh, yellows, then maybe you fire him and you see if you can find somebody better. Let's go ahead and fire him real quick to show. Okay, now we go, we look. Let's see what the coach ratings look like here. And we go to development. Now, you see the little ampersand there? That means I have some filters that are currently turned off, but I can instantly turn them back on by going right click, enable, right click, enable. And so I can see the guys who are good or better in development because that's very important to me. So the, I want to I want to weed out the guys who aren't good at development. So right away I see I, we only have four guys here who would even fit what I'm looking for. So then I can look at George Fennel, and I go in there and I'm like, damn, that's that's pretty solid. That's better than what Brandon Hyde had. But he's temperamental. He works well with temperamental, and he struggles with personable people. So then we go back to staff roles, and we see, oh shit, we have a lot of personable people. And we have a couple people who don't work well with temperamental. So bringing him in might not be the best thing. Let's look at Paul Molitor. He's easy going, easy going. He struggles with normal. Okay. By the way, these don't always make sense. Um, like sometimes a personable guy struggles with personable. And to me, that's hilarious. Why would you struggle with personable if you are personable? But whatever. Like Fennel's made sense, right? He's kind of a dick. He works well with other dickheads. And he doesn't like nice people because he's an asshole. Okay, fine, that checks out. But when somebody is like easygoing and they hate easygoing people, it's like they want to be the only easygoing person on the staff. It's like, okay, you're a weirdo. So then you can look and you off, let's offer him a contract real quick. And then let's go back to staff roles and it'll tell you, right? You have a current offer and you can see there's one normal that he might struggle with Anthony Sanders. That's not the end of the world for me. Okay, so that's the personnel and then 
It's not as detailed in the minors, but it wouldn't be bad to make sure that you kind of get guys that work together. I will say this, me personally, I focus almost exclusively on how well they develop and influence mechanics in the minors. Mechanics is the talent change, right? That's getting a guy a new swing or a new pitch or, or changing his pitching mechanics. How, you can do the storyline, right? It's not necessarily gonna tell you that his swing changed and that's why he's better. But that's what you're gonna get the talent change randomness from, is guys like that. In fact, if you go hover over, it says talent changes there in parentheses. Um, an outstanding here for George Fennell because he's he's more likely to get guys that are 40 grade players turning them into 60s. By the way, that doorbell, uh, our dog has a doorbell that he can press to go out, but he's already been out like 10 times, so he doesn't need to go out right now. He just wants to go out and play with his friends. So I apologize that it's gone off a couple times. So we'll go ahead and hire him or we'll offer Fennell. And then um, I don't even think that they have staff cohesion on those teams. We can look real quick, but I don't think it matters. Front office, staff roles. Okay, wait, they do. Okay, I'm an idiot. But I don't know why it doesn't show that the current offer's out to Fennel. So again, I don't pay as much attention to the personalities down here because I just want the guys that are the best at development and influencing mechanics and it might hurt me sometimes i will say one of my blind spots right now is quality uh minor league performance now doesn't mean you can't develop anybody but if you're putting up you know 300 win percentages where your teams just suck that can influence some of your guys and that can be a big problem so one of the things i am going to put more focus on this year is making sure that those personnel uh staffs are much better wait what, what am i doing here oh sorry yeah so i'm gonna make sure that these are more cohesive in addition to being good at development mechanics uh so that i can get them to change the guys and develop them but also not hate each other in the process all right so back to the views so i have my main views but then i also have my draft view and i don't think we can get to the draft oh yeah we can we go to the draft pool and you can see that it's already on my draft pictures because i've done drafts and it kind of remembers where you what you did in previous sims so this is for my draft pictures and basically it's just potential overall uh, obviously the overall doesn't really matter i could i could honestly get rid of this but every once in a while you have a guy who's pretty close like paul Skeens is a 45 already which means he's probably going to go to double a off rip, maybe even triple A. In fact, you can see what he would look like in triple A. He'd be a 55 in triple A. So yeah, Paul Skeens is gonna go to triple A right away if we were to draft him. But for the most part, you care about potential when it comes to draftees for obvious reasons. So I've got stuff potential, movement, control, fastball potential, stamina, velo, whether they're ground or fly, um, their demand, and then their signability. Notice there's a star on signability. From day one, I filter out the guys who are impossible in every draft. I don't even know they exist. Are they truly impossible? No, there is a world where you can sign them. And if, if I was doing maybe like a Yankee sim or a Dodger sim where I had all the money in the world, maybe I would undo that filter because I could throw so much money at them. Cause you gotta go so far above their ask that it's usually not even worth it unless you have gobs upon gobs of money. So I just filter them out from day one. I don't even need to know that they're out there. In fact, none even show up here um, in this universe, but they definitely are a thing in the game and I just don't wanna see them. And then on the draft for batters, I've got overall potential and then I have the potential for all the key stats, their infield and outfield range, their defensive, uh, at their, their defensive rating at their best position, their catcher ability, demand, sign ability. Let's see if there's any impossibles here. I guess not, because I think they I think they would show up above the extremely hards. So this this class, although it might also be something that is determined closer to the draft. So I don't know. But either way, I never see them anyway. Doesn't matter. Not type not the type of guys I'm looking to get. So that's the draft. Uh, those are the draft views. Then for the free agents. It's a little bit different. I got my free agent pitchers here. So let's go to pitchers. And I've got their popularity, 
locally. Stuff movement control, handedness that they throw with, their war and their R war. This is uh, Fangraphs war versus baseball reference war. They're slightly different. I'm not gonna get into the nuances of them right now. I have both there because because I do basically. Like, do I need both? Not really. Uh, they they will vary some, but they will not they will not greatly influence what I'm doing as far as like basically. Fangraphs War kind of goes off of FIP and their core skills, whereas Baseball Reference War, the R War, goes a bit more off of what they did in a given season. So you can have both up there. You can have one up there. It's not going to change too much. Then, of course, their demand. And I guess none of these guys are all that good, so they don't really have a demand right now. Actually, no. It's because I have a filter on. There you go. So then you can see what they're looking for. And then their stats. Same on the batters free agent batters i have their personality for the for the batters as well i don't have it for the pitchers that's i think that's really just a miss and then so is the uh, injury proneness you should definitely have the injury proneness for pitchers that i just i just messed that up to be honest so let me go ahead and add that and i think that's under the miscellaneous info oh wait is it under the general yes injury proneness and where was their personality right there all right so we got those and i will put them they're fine right here oh no actually i want stuff i don't want to break up the stats there but yeah so i'll put those well that's a little bit closer i wish we could control the width of these i i asked about it and they explained it to me there's something that's kind of difficult about why they can't do it but I really wish we could have it. So I'll put those here. And then you go and you save your view, save it as global. And boom, there we go. Then I also have the low miners, batters, and pitchers. So let me go to a low miners team and show that. And so basically, I have their adaptability, their work ethic, morale, and their role, and, and how they feel about their morale and their role added here in addition to their overall potential draft round and year and then their stats basically these are just the things that i want to look at when i'm looking through the low miners to kind of get a read on some guys you got low work ethic and you suck and you're a 20 out of 20 eh, there's a decent chance i'm just going to cut you because what well, i don't what do i need to worry about you for get out of here let me go to low miners here for pitchers same deal morale roll when they were drafted, they're kind of out of order relative to the batters because sometimes I didn't make them perfectly the same, but it doesn't matter. It's the, it's the same stuff, just in a different order. Adaptability and work ethic. So these are the key things that I want to see of my low miners guys that are going to give me information on them um, when I'm trying to determine whether to call them up or send them down to a lower level. And then for trade, let's go to the trade block. There's probably not going to be too much out there. And in fact, there's actually nothing. Yeah, it's not even being... I was making sure that it wasn't filtered out. So there's nothing here. Let me just go to... Let me go to the MLB player list. Yeah. Okay, so here's the trade pitching on right now. So it's not terribly dissimilar to the uh, free agent one. It has their popularity on it and everything. In fact, I need to add the injury proneness to this one too. So I'm glad I'm doing this because it's reminding me to get some things that I've been meaning to add, but it has their salary instead of their demand for obvious reasons, because they're, they're already under contract. So I wanna know what their salary is, how injury prone they are, how popular they are, their overall, their ratings, and then their stats. So there you go, that's the trade view. And then the awards and uh, the awards views. This is if I vote for the awards. It's just a simplified stat uh, stat view that I like to look at. Plate appearances, homers, and then a bunch of rate stats. Like I don't care so much about your runs and ribbies, right? Like because those are team team dependent. So these are the stats I like to look at for batters. These are the ones I like to look at for pitchers. I don't always vote for my awards, but if I do, these are the stats I want to look at. And then I cannot for the life of me remember what LB means. So I don't know what batting LB or pitching LB means at all. I have no idea. So I can't I can't tell you what those mean. I'm not trying to hide anything from y'all. I just don't know. These are old batting and pitcher rating ones that I use. I should just delete them. They've just stuck around for a while. 
and I should delete the LB ones too, to be honest. And then these are the default ones that come in, all these ones at the top, except for the awards pitching. I accidentally saved it as local one time and I just didn't delete it. I need to clear out some of my clutter. So there you go. There's the award, there's the views rundown and you can change them however you want, right? Like you can, you can add ones that you want that you think are going to be better. You can change things that are different than mine. These are just what I look at and what helps me best manage my teams. Uh, so yeah, I think that kind of covers it with the settings on how I set up a new league and what I go through. Uh, if you have any other further questions after this, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if not, come out to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash spore. You can ask in there as well. I'm pretty good at responding to comments though. My YouTube channel, it's not like I'm getting like a million comments or anything that I can't respond to all of them. So if you do have a question, definitely let me know. But